Hello, welcome to this new series on Christian meditation, prayer of the heart. Hopefully you've already joined us and you've been following us, but if not, this is about a deepening and bringing an understanding of meditation in the Christian tradition to your awareness and to um, your you know, further understanding. Today we're going to take a look at a video presentation which talks about meditation and the way it builds community. So enjoy. For many people today, the secular age that we live in has created many problems in their relationship to religious tradition. Many people have abandoned or rejected uh, traditional religious institutions. Meditation allows us to discover a spiritual path that can transform and renew our relationship to the great religious traditions. The world community is a Christian community but it welcomes people from many levels of faith, of many uh, types of search. Some are practicing traditionally in, in their own Christian churches and denominations. Others are questioning and searching for their Christian identity or their own personal identity. Whenever religion has lost touch with its contemplative roots, it has lost its sense of direction or it's lost its connection with the contemporary needs of, of, of people. By recovering the contemplative dimension at different points in its history, the church has renewed itself. And this is what we can see happening in many areas of the world and of the church's life today. Through the discovery of its own tradition of meditation, Christianity can renew itself, both at the liturgical level, how we worship, forms of worship, it can also teach us that the nature of community is at the heart of the church, not institution, not dogmatism or morality alone. But it's in the spirit of love. After all, meditation is a way of love according to the contemplative traditions. That in the community of love that is created through meditation, we are able to discover again, in a fresh and important way for the modern world, what is the real meaning and the value of religion. Meditation is always a, a personal journey. I can't meditate for you, you can't meditate for me, but we can meditate together. And it's that which reveals the essential mystery of the community that meditation creates. When a person begins to meditate, they often begin with enthusiasm, but very quickly they find the difficulty of the daily practice. It isn't easy to meditate on your own. And so, very naturally, meditation leads to meditating with others. That's how groups form. And the weekly meditation group is an essential building block of the world community. Meditation groups meet in all sorts of places around the world, in people's homes, in churches, in prisons, in hospitals, in schools, in places of work. I've been involved in introducing Christian meditation into two prisons in the UK, a men's prison and a women's prison. My experience has been extremely rewarding. I feel a great privilege to be bringing this gift into the lives of these men and women. For many, they'll come along to the group out of curiosity, just to relieve stress or to be able to get to sleep at night, but for others they really see this time as potentially transforming, which of course it, it can be to, to put a life of prayer and meditation in place when in this difficult environment 
can almost turn into a, a monastic experience. And I think some individuals really recognise the opportunity. The weekly group follows a simple format. It meets in the same place, the same time, every week. There is a stability and a fidelity in the very nature of a group. The group begins with a, a teaching on meditation, emphasising the simplicity. It then leads into a period of meditation together, 25 or 30 minutes. And then a time after that for sharing, for questions or discussion. So the group is an ideal way both of introducing people for the first time to the way of meditation and also to supporting the daily practice of its members. For some people the connection between meditation and community is a surprising one. We think of meditation as a solitary practice and in fact it is an experience of solitude but not of isolation. In the solitude of meditation we discover and we embrace our own essential uniqueness. We become the person we are called to be. And in that experience, we discover ourselves in relationship. And so meditation quite naturally leads to a sense of community. Perhaps, at first, a limited community. The people you meditate with every week in your meditation group. Or perhaps a sense of community with meditators around the world, both in your own tradition and even outside your own tradition. And ultimately that sense of community becomes universal. Community also is a means of serving the world so that our own spiritual journey doesn't become too self-centered. We're able to see that the essential dynamic of spiritual growth is a dynamic of love and compassion of service to others. And also in community, especially in Christian faith, we're able to see that a spiritual form is developing, the body of Christ is taking shape through human lives, through human interaction. The pattern of growth of the world community over the years has shown that from the individual, the group develops, and then as meditation groups multiply, a center comes into being. There are a number of meditation centers around the world. And the purpose of these centers is to support the teaching and the training of those who will, at the right moment in their own lives, share the teaching with others. The International Office is based at the London Christian Meditation Centre, which is in central London. The International Office serves the community worldwide and is especially useful to the smaller countries who do not have their own national centres, providing them with resources and support for their Christian meditation groups. Out of the personal experience of meditation, we see that community develops and eventually forms into a national community. In many parts of the world, there are national coordinators. Every three years, the national coordinators of the world community come together and share their experience, their insights, and their sense of future developments and challenges. In every tradition of meditation, there is the understanding that we need a teacher, a guru. In the Christian tradition, Jesus is that teacher, the teacher within, teaching us through the Spirit and through our own experience. But also, Christ, in a mysterious way, shares that role of teacher with us, his disciples. Meditation needs to be taught, it needs to be passed on. It is most effectively passed on through the humble authority of those who are learning to meditate. In the world community we try to give some encouragement, some training to those who have reached a point in their own journey where they feel able or they feel the call to pass on this teaching to others. The school in the world community is a program that helps people find their own gift, find their own voice in order to pass on this tradition within the community. There are three elements to the school. The first is called the Essential Teaching. It's a weekend residential experience in which people who have been meditating for some time are able to situate their own 
experience and journey in meditation into the broader Christian tradition. Second aspect of the school is the roots of Christian mysticism. This is a course that is given in different forms in different places, sometimes as a weekly course, sometimes over a period of a year, in which the participants gain an overall sense of the Christian mystical tradition by examining in some, in some depth the, the, the teaching and the influence of individual teachers. The third aspect of the school is the school retreat. This is a more concentrated kind of retreat, a silent retreat, in which a relatively small group of meditators, with the help of two or three uh, guides, will come to a deeper understanding and insight into the working of the spirit in their own lives, and often discover in a life-changing way uh, their gift for sharing this with others. In the last year of his life, uh, John Main hosted a uh, seminar at the monastery on art and meditation. And this was the inspiration for what became the John Main Seminar. Every year since his death, the world community has put on a seminar led by a significant leader or figure in the spiritual community, or somebody speaking on the spiritual life from their own experience. The presenters of the seminar have included his Holiness, the Dalai Lama, Charles Taylor, the philosopher, Mary McAleese, the President of Ireland, Rome Williams, the arch present Archbishop of Canterbury. And through these significant teachers and figures in their own field, the world community is able to enter into dialogue with many aspects of the modern world. Every year, the world community holds an international meditation retreat at the monastery of Monte Oliveto in Italy. This is the mother house of my own monastic family. It's a beautiful experience for meditators from around the world to come together in a place of prayer, a place of tradition, and to discover that in deepening their own spiritual journey, they are also growing into community. One of John Main's great insights, I think, for the modern world is that meditation, this experience of prayer, this experience of interiority, leads and grows into community. And here at the monastery, we're able to understand something of the nature of this experience in the light of the great monastic tradition. We can see here Benedict's wisdom in understanding the spiritual journey as a harmony of the individual, coming together in body, mind and spirit, understanding that the spiritual life is a, a balance between prayer, work and study. And in these ways we come to understand that our own spiritual journey is not an isolated or lonely one, but it is an experience of expansion into the body of Christ. Since the first publication of John Main's teaching on meditation, the Gethsemane Talks in 1976, the community has continued to develop its, its teaching role through books, tapes, CDs, and the work of Media Media, the publishing arm of the world community now based in Singapore. The internet has transformed modern consciousness. We are able to be in touch with vast amounts of information and with many parts of the world simultaneously. There are good and bad uses of the internet. A good use of the internet is to create what one might call a web of silence, a connection between people at a deep spiritual level, enabling them to share their differences without their differences becoming divisions, to experience the common ground that we find in the practice of meditation. But the internet can also be very important as part of people's spiritual search. It brings people together, it enables them to make contact, to form groups and to be in touch with others who are on the same pilgrimage. The World Community website has now spawned the different sites reflecting particular aspects uh, of the life of the community and the teaching of meditation to particular groups. There's a website for those interested in teaching meditation to children. There's another website for young people. There's a website 
for oblates, Benedictine oblates of the world community. There's a website uh, for those who are in recovery in the 11th step program. The community also produces a newsletter four times a year and this is sent out to individuals and to groups around the world together with a spiritual teaching and news about the community worldwide and of course the national and local communities as well. One of the most useful and popular publications is a quarterly CD, the Meditatio CD, which is sent to every meditation group around the world four times a year. The world community is a very much a decentralized uh, organization, but of course it does need some financial support. And this is provided largely through the Friends program. The Friends program is a way by which individuals and groups can contribute according to their own resources to the work of the community, especially to our work in trying to bring meditation to developing countries and those parts of the world that need financial and material help. Today is Sister Ruth Montrichard. Sister is the former national coordinator for the World Community for Christian Meditation, Trinidad and Tobago, and now the national coordinator for the Caribbean. And Sister recently attended a national coordinator's meeting in Jacksonville, Florida, which brought together meditators and well coordinators from meditating coordinators from the North America and the Caribbean. And Sister, I'm going to. Um, ask you here to explain and tell us what does meditation building community that we've just seen in the video how does that relate really to your experience in Jacksonville and to what mm -hmm. you found mm -hmm. there? Well the Jacksonville meeting took place in November 2013 it was an amazing experience for me because I walked into a group of people about 25 people whom I'd never met before and there was immediately, in, uh, after about one hour, there seemed to be a connection between us. That these were people that I hadn't known before, but suddenly they became connected. That's what I could say, they became connected. And I think that the, the Christian meditation, the act of meditating, practicing meditation, made that connection. Um, they it was held in, in um, a retreat center in Jacksonville, a beautiful place um, on a river, very mm. cool, <laughs> but it was, it was a very peaceful experience. Um, we started every day with meditation. Um, we meditated four times a day. We started at 6.30 in the morning with a meditation session and then a contemplative walk and then another meditation session and then we got into groups and started to talk about our own experiences. There were people there from Curacao, from Haiti, from Canada, from the States, from Mexico, from St. Vincent, and of course from Trinidad. And we shared what happened in our own country. We, we, we realized that some countries were more advanced than others. Other, some countries just had one meditation group, others had many. Others, some, some countries had centers, others just had one or two groups. Mm -hmm. But whatever was there, it became part of a whole. And it was an experience of sharing and learning from one another. And it made you feel that something was happening in the world and in the church that was just extraordinary because the way that meditation has just opened up in the Caribbean has been something that we didn't plan just people started to respond to what the needs were so Jacksonville was that sort of sharing with one another um, 
when we left, we left friends, we left with people who wanted to help us to promote meditation. And as a result of that meeting, we have the U.S. meditators are going to organize something called an essential teaching workshop. And that is going to be open to coordinators and group leaders in Trinidad and in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. including Curacao and Haiti, where we will go and sort of develop our understanding of meditation and our practice of meditation. Because in this whole question of the practice, we are always beginners. Mm -hmm. No matter how many years you're meditating, you're always a beginner because each time you meditate is a different experience. So we were there for about three days and at the end I think we, we started off as strangers and we left as friends. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I notice, and of course we're seeing some of your images mm -hmm. here yeah. um, as we talk about it, is that uh, it's, it's, and I noticed this from my experiences yes. too of meeting other meditators globally and in the World Community Center, mm -hmm. is that uh, it goes across, the, it goes across gender, it goes across, across age, it goes across culture. When you even mention those Caribbean countries, I mean, or, of the region, Curacao, Mexico, um, and, Haiti. and Haiti, you're talking three different languages or mm -hmm. four if you count mm -hmm. Haiti having two. Yeah. And, you know, already you realize the power in, and maybe that's why it, it has such a power to build yeah. community because yeah. it can straddle so many differences. And it even straddles religion because mm -hmm. in the last session, um, Lawrence Freeman, who's the director, he was talking about meditating, interfaith dialogue and meditation. And he talked about meditation with Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims and the work that the world community was doing in integrating these um, meditating with people of other religions mm -hmm. and how it didn't it it helped people to come together rather than be divided mm -hmm. and then at the end of the session he said to he said well, look at us here now, I didn't realize this until the last day there was Adventist Methodist Catholic Anglican Presbyterian there were a number of Christian religions there, as Episcopalian, mm -hmm. and I, I did not even recognize that. Mm -hmm. It was only in the last day. Pentecostal, I think. Pentecostal, and I couldn't tell you who was which. Mm -hmm. It was just we were a group of a community of meditators, and that had us bound together. Mm -hmm. And religion, I wouldn't say it didn't matter, mm -hmm. because my religion matters to me. Mm -hmm. But religion was not something that divided us. Mm -hmm. Meditation drew us together. So really, it created a sense of community, a sense of oneness. Mm -hmm. And when we sat and we meditated together, and we shared the Eucharist at the end, the last day, and everybody sat in a circle, and we were one. Mm -hmm. And it made me think that this is what God wants that they all may be one. Mm -hmm. And that is how it, it has brought us to, to the sense of, of brotherhood and sisterhood. That the, the, even though religion, we e express our religion in different ways, we are all there as one part of the human family, mm -hmm. which I thought was so beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, sister, tell us a little bit about how to meditate. Tell us a little bit about your understanding of the essentials of meditation practice. Yeah. Well, I think when we're going to meditate, uh, and we will keep saying this again, I think, I'm following at you. the end of, of every program, because it's something we have to keep reminding ourselves of. First of all, we have to keep our bodies still. So to meditate, you sit up straight, the main um, thing you have to do is to keep your back straight. Whether you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged, or you're sitting with your back against a chair, you keep your back as straight as possible. You put your hands on your lap. And you try to keep still. The stillness of body will help us to come to a sense of stillness. Now the next step is to get silent. And to get silent, we have to silence the thoughts in our mind. Remember, meditation 
is the prayer of the heart. So we're trying to get from the mind to the heart. And we do that by saying a prayer word, a sacred word, a mantra. We can use the word Jesus. We can use the word Abba, which was a word made sacred by Jesus. We could use, the, we could use uh, w any other prayer or word in the gospel that we think peace, if, if that appeals to us. But the word I would suggest, and what John Means suggested, is that we use the word Maranatha. It's an Aramaic word. Aramaic is a word, the language that Jesus spoke. And so we say it in four equally stressed syllables. So we sit up, we sit straight, we close our eyes gently, and interiorly, without moving our lips, we simply say in our minds and give us all our attention, Maranatha. We say it in four syllables, Maranatha, Maranatha. You want to say it quietly, interiorly, and as we sit together here now, if you want to continue meditating, just say your word, that's all you have to do. Say the word over and over interiorly. And if you're distracted, gently come back to it. With your eyes gently closed, and I think now we're going to meditate. I think for a minute. Yes, let us um, let's meditate together, and we invite you to join us. I will um, strike this gong gently, and that will be our signal to go into meditation. So sit upright, as Sister said, close your eyes gently. Uh, I keep my hands like this. You can keep your hands on your lap. You can keep your hands as you like. And, um, and say, your med say your mantra, Maranatha, Maranatha, from beginning to end, and let your thoughts just drift away. <laughs> 